excellent audience, and this is a great audience for this event, which is uh, going to be fabulous. I have uh, hurt my, um, what do you call it, rotary cuff on the right side, so I'm like miserable right now. <laughs> <laughs> but and here's it, here's my sample of my writing. Right, my writing. I hope I can read it. <laughs> uh, Lucy and Gary Morton come to town. Lucy's mother and stepfather came to New York to visit her. For some reason, I offered to cook dinner for them at my apartment. I am not a cook. <laughs> My apartment had a door that swung shut as you left the place, like a hotel door. It had a fantastic German lock with a key that was four inches long and ratcheted. You could not know you had not know you had the key in your pocket when you went out, unless under great stress. I decided to cook something down home, a little soul food for Lucille Ball. I'm from Arkansas. Eggplant. Fried, of course. And other stuff, which I bought at Zabar's, I think. Potato salad, maybe a smoked ham, it's all hazy now. I got home early from my matinee and laid the table. I only had three plates. <laughs> so I ran out and bought more from Conrad's. They still had the same permanent sale. <laughs> and I got one more chair from somewhere. I put out the silverware, the plates, the napkins, the condiments, including uh, my, uh, I am pretty sure, Tabasco sauce. <laughs> I made use of my two bowls for potato salad and green beans. I had a cake from the erotic bakery across the street. <laughs> <laughs> Not one of the penis ones, <laughs> or anything erotic. Just a plain cake, maybe chocolate, that should be good. I had no dessert plates, but I figured I could wash their plates and silverware after the main meal and reuse them. <laughs> as, uh, as I write this, I'm wondering what the hell I was doing. What kind of cracker nut would serve up such a dinner in New York City to Lucille Ball and the guy she married? A clodhopper from the Ozarks who insisted on being himself. That's who. Who wouldn't cater to who wouldn't cater I who, who wouldn't cater to my girlfriend's mother because well, just because. That's why. <laughs> This is me, I wanted to say. I could have said it better, say at Le Cirque, or Raphael's, or Le Alpi. I knew a lot of good, fancy, but easy restaurants. But something in me said, I would like this woman, Lucy's mother, to know me, what I really like. How much I feel for her daughter. And it's just me, Arkansas boy, Feeling it. Time was up. All was ready. I put on the eggplant to fry. I made the first plate of golden brown circles. Perfect. I made a second plate full. I had some eggplant left. What the hell? Maybe Lucille would be hungry. <laughs> I put it in the frying pan on low. There were uh, 15 minutes from due. What did I miss? I checked the table, looked good. I thought kind of picnicky, maybe a watermelon. No, no, I've got cake. <laughs> OMG, wine, wine. I've forgotten the wine, OMG. There was a liquor store on the corner, 50 steps away. I ran out the door. I ran down the single flight to the corner into the store. White wine, I yelled to Sam. What kind, he yelled back, back at me. I don't know. Who's it for? I, I didn't say Lucille Ball. No way. A lady, I said. Take this. One or two, he yelled. Two, I yelled. He handed me the wine. I handed him money. I could have been buying raspberry slurp wine for all I knew. But I knew Sam. I ran out the door. 
The street was now full of fire truck. <laughs> One huge oh, fire truck. No. Where's the fire? A, fu a firefighter came down my stairs and out the, the open the street door. I ran up to him. What's happening? Kitchen fire. Guy left the door locked. <laughs> we have to break the door. Oh, no. Which apartment? That one. That one. And he pointed up one flight to my apartment. Oh, no. I could smell eggplant burning. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the pan burning. The truck's siren started going. A crowd began to gather across the street, oh Jesus. And my next door neighbor, same apartment, next building, opened my front door and stepped out. Smoke followed him. The fireman had returned with an ax, a very large ax, Paul Bunyan size. My neighbor held up my key. You left your key, Larry, he said mildly, and I and I turned off your eggplant. It's pretty burned. <laughs> My God, I said, how did you get in? Oh, I smelled the eggplant burning, so I went out on my balcony. Our balconies were metal structures so closely joined that you didn't have to worry about them. I stepped over onto yours, and I opened your kitchen door. It was unlocked, Larry. I turned off the pan and I saw your key and I figured you'd forgotten it, right? Yeah. Jesus, man. Thanks. Wow. Looks like a nice picnic up there. I said. <laughs> yeah, I said, nice. I, I forgot the wine. Okay, well, here's your key. Don't you hate these things? The firemen were clomping around, checking the walls for heat, looking at the ham and the potato salad. Should I invite them too? <laughs> and my neighbor? To meet Lucille Ball, the biggest star in the world? I looked at the time. It was time. My apartment was a haze of smoke. I could barely see across the room. But the fire was out. The pan was burned, and there would be less eggplant <laughs> for everyone. But that was okay. I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't eat my share. <clears throat> anyway, maybe uh, the firemen clomped downstairs. Uh, I, I'd make a picnic for them another day. Uh, <clears throat> my neighbor had been so nice and so pushy, I had to gently push him out the door. How did he know that I was going out with Lucy Arnaz? He was, I learned, a Broadway gypsy. They know everything in the theater. I swung my kitchen door with my front door open to clear the smoke. I could almost see across my kitchen when the downstairs door, street door, opened and Lucy ushered in her mother and her stepfather, but perfect. And perfect eyebrows, her aging skin. I like that. She had a smoker's premature, prematurely old and scratchy voice, which she used to command quite often. And she gave the impression of a person who felt she had to command or the world she inhabited would collapse. She was huffing and puffing from the climb, and I sympathized with her. I was 45, and I bounded up those stairs, but I was sorry I lived on a two-level apartment with the entry on the second floor. Lucille sniffed the air. What's burning? <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing now, I said. I was cooking eggplant for... Eggplant! <laughs> I demanded. Yes, I finished my sentence. For dinner. Huh, she said. Gary? Gary Morton had made it up the stairs with Lucy, who now introduced us all. I didn't look at Lucy. 
Her mother sounded angry about eggplant. <laughs> Even the idea of eggplant. <laughs> Suddenly, eggplant seemed to be one of the worst vegetables in the world. The whole idea of eggplant. Okay, I'm, I'm not a cook. I'm just trying to please. Gary said, Lucy, this smoke is bad. We should get out of here. Yeah, said Lucille. Maybe she was allergic. Okay. Uh, and the brief conversation turned to what restaurant we could all go to at this time where we could get a proper dinner. I wanted then to have a tarp to throw over all of the stuff I'd laid out. The cooked eggplant, nice and brown in the dish, the deli stuff. Let's forget the whole event. What a messed up introduction. I might have thought I'd made a horrible mistake. But since I didn't and hadn't, then I didn't feel like I had. Later, I got to know this was Lucille's reaction to almost everything. <laughs> anything, anything new startled her, and so she responded like someone jabbed with a pin. Anything new was not a good thing, couldn't be, had to be challenged. Halt, who goes there? Lucille was a sentry in her own life. It was on. Yay. Thank you. This is from a memoir that I'm writing, and it's got so far about a thousand pages. It's going to have more. <laughs> wow. And, uh, and it's called Famous Enough. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. We got married about seven months after that, and about seven months after that, we had Simon. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's so I'm honored great. that he's here. I'm honored that you're here. Is I'm getting goosebumps. I know, but see, we promised everybody stories, didn't we? So that's a great story. I want to read more. Yeah. Um, we're here for yours fun and ours, but your name is not in the credits. Who is, who? Yeah, who are you in this movie? Because there's no Morgan um, listed. No. No, so who are you? In this movie? In this movie. In this movie, I'm Suzanne Capito, who is the child actress that I used to be. Ah. <laughs> Back in the day. And why did you change your name? Well, let's see. Um, I started out in the business in 1956, um, doing, you know, Playhouse 90 and Twilight Zone and Rawhide and Gunsmoke and Sea Hunt and all those kind of things. And I had a, a really successful acting career as a child uh and actually yours mine and ours was the last is this hurting your butt i mean it's not nope. mine oh wait i know oh, okay there you go okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well too. um this was actually the last movie that i did as a child actor and it was very difficult back then because when you made that transition or tried to make that transition from being a child actor to being an adult actor it was extremely difficult. Hollywood did not want to see you grow up. And so you pretty much um, disappeared, got into another line of work, and your career was over. It was very tough on child actors back then. Um, Ron Howard, Kurt Russell, and myself kind of made it through. Ron did it mainly by becoming a director. But it was, it was extremely hard. So. When I turned 18 years old, um, I decided that I didn't have a career anymore. And all the work that I had done really didn't matter to Hollywood at all. So I felt there was really nothing else that I wanted to do in life except to act and perform. And the only way I can do that is reinvent myself. So I reinvented my look, got a new name, moved to New York City, 
and became a completely different person. Throughout the resume, Michael, nobody knew I had been a child actor ever wow. okay. <laughs> and started from scratch in New York City. Interesting. Okay. So wow. this movie, Yours. <laughs> my favorite movie, um, tell us about the audition. Do you remember the audition? Oh, I all? definitely remember the audition. Um, it was at Paramount Studios, and it was late at night. It was about, gosh, the studio had already closed, really. It was 7.30, 8 o'clock, and they wanted me to do a screen test in the fishbowl. Okay, the fishbowl is a room over at Paramount where it's, it's kind of like you go and perform. You can't see the people behind the glass, but they can see you. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't know who was back there auditioning me. Um, they gave me the, the sides for the older daughter that Jennifer Leake played. Okay. Um, that's, that's my audition scene. And when it was all over, it was kind of a dramatic scene, which was odd for a comedy, but there was a dramatic scene in it. And when I came out, um, came out of the door, my mother was out there, and this door opened and this person walked out with a kind of like a taxi hat you know one of those i don't know what they are not beanies but they're kind of like a taxi driver would wear what paul's wearing right yeah fedora. Yeah, like yeah yeah kind of like a fedora exactly and uh you know this person came out with 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 you know pants and a jacket and this hat on and she came over to me, shook my hand, and said, very, very, well, in a low voice, very, very good job. You're very talented. And I looked, and I said, oh, my gosh. I only knew Lucy from I Love Lucy. And I suddenly realized it was her. Whoa. It was her. So she, was watching. she was behind there with Robert Blumoff and with Mel Shavelson, and she said, not the older daughter, but we're having you in the movie. Well, and you yeah. said at yeah. night. It was at night. Because yeah. I, I'm now putting the dots together. Is she was probably filming her the Lucy show at that time. Could have been. And at night, you know, after rehearsal, right. she went on to do the movie. Yeah. And yeah. so she was watching Walls. So that's how you met. But I was such a culture shock for me because I only my my whole thought of Lucy was crazy Lucy, you know, Lucy and Desi. And I expected this funny lady, you know, and, and a lot of red hair, and she had all of her hair up underneath. I guess she wore she did wear wigs in the, in the movie all the time. And it just, you know, I had I'd been in the business for so long already, so I kind of knew the drill, but it really surprised me because she was not, she was not what I thought. Not what you yeah. thought. Yeah. And so, that was my next question. When did you meet Lucy? What about Henry, Henry Fonda? Henry, I met on the first day of shooting, and uh, we. Hi, Dan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, that was it. We met all the kids that day. Uh, we all went for wardrobe fitting separately, and then we all met up. You know, went to school because they had the school teacher on set, and we, those of us who had to go to school, and then it turned into summertime, so we didn't have to go to school. Do you remember the first <clears throat> scene that you filmed? I'm I'm wanting to say it was um, it was the scene where Henry comes home and the kids are all all in the living room. It's the very beginning of the movie, yeah. And so um, that was the very first thing we did. But you know, I have such a special place in my heart for Henry. I really do because he was he gave me something to carry through my entire career through very very difficult times really okay. yeah and did you call him mr fonda hank i Henry? did i called him mr fonda mr fonda yes. in those days yes. everybody was pretty much yeah miss it, ball or was she was no she was actually nobody nobody talked to me <laughs> 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 to, to be perfectly honest with you it was uh it was a hundred percent business really? um, oh, wow. yes who has never seen this movie before? Oh, a few people. Wow, okay. okay. Who has seen it more than five times? <laughs> more wow. than ten times. <laughs> oh my god. Twenty times. I have you all be just so you know. That. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. Um, yeah. one of the questions I was thinking is 
There were 20 kids, well, 18 kids. 18 kids, yeah. How do you film a scene with 18 kids? I mean, the act, I mean, it, it was a big crowd every single time they got together. Yeah. Or, yeah. how did it work? Well, it, it, it worked pretty well. All the kids were professionals. They were professional actors, so, you know, except for the babies. I mean, Tracy Nelson, I think, was two. You no, know, she was three. And then there was a baby. But they they didn't work very much. The rest of us Two had, were on loan out. Yeah, two were on loan out, yes. exactly. But uh, the rest of the kids had resumes behind them, so everybody knew the drill. And I think you just, it was an unspoken rule. After you worked the first day with Lucy, you did your job. Oh, really? <laughs> you okay. didn't mess around. It was, uh, it was extremely disciplined. And as surprising as it, as it was with all the Christmas scene and the whole thing like that, Everybody did their thing, and there was no uh, no issues. We all had so much fun working together, and we literally became a family. Nice. By did. the time you got hired, how long did it take to film the entire movie? I think we were we were on it for three months. Three months, yeah. Okay. And you said Paramount Studios, but also at another studio. Yeah, across the street. Back in back in the day, uh, Melrose. There was, there was the gate at Melrose and across the street, and, and there was Western Costume Company, which was right down the street. And right across the street was, was Producer Studio. And that's where a lot of films were made, like Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. And it things that, if the studio lots were full and all the sound stages were being used, they would move or build sets at Producer Studio. So they ended up building the entire interior of the Beardsley house on the the set over at Producer Studio. Is that Studio. where Raleigh Studios? Could yeah, be that's it. Oh, that's that, it. Same okay. thing. They just called it Producer Studio Producer back then. Producer Studio. I yeah. didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do you remember your most memorable moment on the set? Or scene? You know, it, it, there were so many. But I remember being in the wedding scene out at uh, uh, San Fernando Mission. It was 106 degrees. Oh, so you should be used and, to this and there was no air conditioning in the mission. And Lucille had to be in this suit, you know, this wedding suit. And just, I mean, everybody was just wilting, all uh, just wilting. And we were so hot. And the boys, we'd all sit out on the grass, you know, while they were doing some of the, the close ups inside. And that was the year that. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club. <laughs> the Beatles came out, and, and Gary Getzman, who plays Greg in this, he is now a huge producer with Tom Hanks. I mean, this guy is is phenomenal in Hollywood. And Gary had the the uh, the tape recorder with this. <laughs> it was great, and we're all just trying to sing and keep cool. But it was. It was wonderful, and the other thing that was amazing for me was Henry Fonda. Lucy bought us all, all the girls, one day. She came on set, and she handed out needlepoint kits. Okay, she gave the boys something different, but she gave all the girls needlepoint kits. I don't know how to needlepoint. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to figure out, what do I do with this? I want to look like, you know, I love this, but I don't know what I'm doing. And Henry came over and sat in his director's chair next to me, and he goes, here, let me help you with that. Wow. He taught me how to needlepoint. Henry Fonda. And to this day, I still needlepoint things, and I always remember. Oh. He sat there and showed me stitches, and that's what he did for therapy, believe it or not. He'd sit in his director's chair, and he'd just do that. It was the most bizarre thing, but it was the most <laughs> amazing, touching moment for me because he cared. He was an actor who cared so much, no matter if you were a kid. You know what I mean? Right. It was the same thing, it was the same thing with Lucy. I learned from her how to be a consummate professional. I learned and I never forgot it because she knew everybody's job on that set. She knew her lighting. She knew directing. Mel Shavelson basically just kind of went, okay, whatever you want, you know. She knew. And she'd be standing in a spot, and she'd go, I need that a little bit, you know. 
you know it was it was incredible and I learned how to be a professional she was never late she never held anybody up she knew every line she knew everybody else's motivation it was incredible incredible we've we've lost we've lost that today I think I'm just like speechless right now because I'm <laughs> listening to you and go, I want to listen. I don't want to ask questions. I just want to listen to you. Um, there was a major scene that I heard that the director called cut while she was doing it and she was upset with it. But it was the uh, scene when um, your brothers gave oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Lucy yeah. a drink. It was a light yeah. screwdriver, but yeah. then your brothers added oh, vodka, yeah, vodka, vodka, gin, <laughs> scotch. Right, 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 right. And she became a little drunk in the scene, so right. she laughed, she cried. Yeah. And um, I wish this damn room would stop spinning, but um, mm -hmm. she said, damn, on TV. Yeah. I mean, in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that scene? Oh, very well, very well. Uh, from the from the moment out in the out in the living room when she takes that first drink, I mean, honestly, the expression on her face, we all had to bite the inside of our cheeks to not laugh. I mean, she was a riot. It was it was hilarious. But we had to remember stay in character. This is shocking to you kids, you know. But um, that was a tough scene for her because she had to keep in that drunken mood and the laughter and the crying and everything, and she wanted it perfect, and she got it perfect. And I she remember, I remember it got cut too early, and she was a little bit out of shape about that. Yeah. I bet. We got uh, like two more questions. Oh, um, I know. Right. Um, do you keep in touch with any of your brothers and sisters? And I also heard, that they're no longer together, but one of your brothers <laughs> married one of your sisters yeah. in real life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim Matheson and Jennifer Leak were the two oldest kids in the in the movie, and they were <laughs> hot and heavy going on. I mean, everybody knew it, and that attraction was there, you know. So yeah, they got married. It didn't last very long, but you know. <laughs> What can I tell you? <laughs> story. Okay. But I don't. See, I don't. I wish I did see the kids more often. Eric Shea, I run into every once in a while, but um, and Tim every once in a while, but but nobody else. Don't know what happened. I finally got to meet Tim Matheson last October, and he played Mike. Yeah. So I figured he played me, but um, he was in an episode of Rhoda. Do you remember Rhoda? Yeah. yeah. He played the character Michael Stern. <laughs> And, I mean, and he played me, and so I had an 8x10 made of that, where it said, so you know, great. Tim Matherson as Michael Stern. So That's so great. It was exciting. But he the most so important good. question about, not about your spawn and ours, uh -huh. is that we're all, we all want to know, um, why did you shoot Bobby Ewing? Oh, <laughs> 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 Let me tell you, I shot, I shot him, I tried to get him in the hospital and overdose him, and then I hit him with a car and finally killed yes. him. Yes! Finally killed him, right? And then the producer calls me a year later and says, hey, want to come back to the show? <laughs> it was a dream. It was all a dream. I said, what? Are you kidding me? I said, I'm dead. He's dead. No, 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 no what have you no. not? So that was exciting for you. You oh, were dead and where you had well, another job. I had gone on to do other things, and I actually, when I hit him with the car and did the death scene, <laughs> I was seven months pregnant oh. with my daughter because Lenny Katzman had told me, he said, you and Patrick are going to be leaving the show. Patrick wants to go on and, and do films, features. And so we got to have somebody kill him, and I guess it's you. Wow. And I went, well, that's okay. So I got pregnant. <laughs> I figured I'm going to have my kid, you know. And uh, when we did the, the scene. Yeah. You in the car. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you know what's funny about that scene? This is how things have changed, you guys, in, in television. Back in the day, in 80, I guess it was 80s. Six, maybe 85, 86. Um, we had something known as standards and practices at CBS. That was the police. That basically, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't touch here, you can't touch that, we can't show too much blood, 
whatever. That's the way it was. And standards and practices would go through every script and make sure everything was up and up for the American public to see. Because they knew everybody gathered around the TV set on Friday night and watched this. Kids as well. So um, on my death scene, Lenny Katzman, they had me all done up with the blood all over my face and the blonde wig on and the whole thing. And Lenny said, all right, what we're going to do is the cop is going to come in and pull your head back. The wig is going to fall off, and we're going to see your dead face, and we're going to know it's you. And they wanted my eyes closed. So fine, great deal. Lenny comes over, and he says, OK, I want your eyes open. And I went, what? And he goes, I know standards and practices is going to have a fit, but that's what people will remember. Your blue eyes staring dead. Yeah. And he said, I'll work on them. We're going to wow. get this. And they wow. did. They let it go. I remember it quite they well. They let it go because it was the cliffhanger. And he wanted, he said, I want them to see your dead eyes. And I went, okay. <laughs> okay, great. Yours, yours, mine, and ours. My all-time favorite movie. Yep. All-time favorite. Besides Lucy on TV, my favorite non-Lucy show was Dallas. And you're in both. You're, you're at the top of my list. You're, you're, you're Woo! Awesome. So thank you for coming. Woo! This is such an honor. I, I, I'm excited. I think we're all going to go to the bathroom now. It's not together. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we're breaking for the restroom. If we want to, or we if can. If you want to. If who we... wants to go to the restroom? He's going to the restroom. Uh, Lawrence Luckenbill, thank you so much. Lawrence, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, Emmy Award winner, Tony nominee. You got it. I get to call him. Bye, Larry. All right. <laughs> so I think, are we doing rest We're just, we're going to roll. We're going to roll right yeah. into the movie. Yeah. Okay. We got some seats back there, so yeah. we don't have to be in the front row. I can't see this one. All right, I'm excited. Oh, and I haven't seen this. Oh my God! I got wings. The last time you saw I was, this, it's probably been 15 years. I was 15 years old, you guys. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Uh, uh, no. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll do the math. <laughs> also, she said that she did the Ed Sullivan show with Lucy and yeah. all the kids. And, yeah, we did. And I have it on tape somewhere. And guess who was on the show with us? That no one knew. The Bee Gees. The Bee Gees oh, were on it. Yeah. We didn't know who they were. It's some English group. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. Wow. So we're gonna start the movie. Let's see. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.